Hey, what's going on everybody? Dave here, a uh, new video, uh, not really a new subject, just something a little bit fun, different. Um, first and foremost, make sure and uh, go over and check out uh, playmocon.com for the latest on the GBWC uh, online competition, um, or entries I should say. Um, next up, also make sure and check out uh, our new sponsor, plunderrun.com, and also Badger Airbrushes. Um, <clears throat> so what this video is going to be about today is, as some of you know, I've been working on, uh, I can't remember if I showed you before, but one of our evil friends got us all started on um, the minis being, these being Necrons, all these little guys, I still have some touch ups and stuff to do on them. Um, so I have a little cord of them. So those will be um, those will be in a different video. Uh, I have a whole army, a pre pretty much an apocalypse size army on those, um, and I've just been messing with those little by little. Get those little guys out of the way because they are not being. The focus today. Um, today's focus is another thing that got into just because um, a lot of the things look cool, um, the rules are pretty simple. Is uh, as anybody watching this that's played with them, um, you'll recognize these as swamp gobbers. Um, these are from uh, War Machine Hordes. Um, I actually fell in love with uh, the Troll Bloods, so I started um, making up a small army of those. Um, some of you know one of the things I love doing is making um, bases, custom bases, things like that. So um, what I've done on these, now keep in mind these were my very first that I painted. Um, a lot of people kind of criticize that I used inks and stuff for the shading. I really like the, the one look. Um, what I'm really happy with is uh, the basing on them. Um, you can see I've got this moss here, and I think I'm going to have to keep my hand behind it just to, so I'll focus on it. Okay. So, and you'll see it's got muddy texture. Um, it's got, you've got your little plants on there, little bushes, things like that. So, what I'm going to do is I'm going to focus on, you've got the same thing on here, you can see it's all wet and marshy just the way I wanted it. I love these little guys. They're so cool. Um, and then this is a, another base that I'm working on. Um, if you wonder why I kept the base, uh, the back white is, um, uh, you guys will see it later on. I want to be able to see light through the bottom if I display it on something that projects the light up. Um, because these bases are going to be uh, kind of swampy also. Uh, so I'd like some light transference. So this is actually on for my um, uh, Dire Troll Mauler is what this base is going to be on. And, and it's it's nowhere done, nowhere near done. And you guys will get to see it when it's all done. Um, but I wanted to show you guys how, how I end up doing my bases. Um, they're a blast to do and uh, really cheap. Now, you can use a lot of things like uh, pork. I think I've got some over here. You can use things like this, chunks of cork. Um, I see a lot of people, they, they'll glue them to the base, uh, spray paint them black, um, dust them over with some gray, then kind of call them done or paint some colors on there. Um, I really like the look of natural stuff. So actually on this, what this is, is um, chunks of cedar and cedar bark that you will find around any normal flower bed, stuff like that, especially uh, industrial. Um, they they love using it because it it will retain moisture 
and cedar uh, naturally kind of keeps the bugs away. Um, that's why you can buy like cedar blocks on hangers to hang in your clothes because it keeps moths away. It keeps away certain bugs. So I really like the the texture on these. Um, I actually went through and I grabbed certain pieces, things like that that I know I can use for bases. So for that, your cost value is free. You just gotta take your time and pick up some. Um, a small, a small baggy worth will last you a lot of bases. Um, another thing is once you do that, because they are being used in flower beds, you want to um, just let them sit out for several weeks, just to make sure they're nice and dry. Now, what I did on here was I kind of laid out how I wanted him to be on here, and I actually think I have that backwards. So one foot's going to be here, one foot's going to be here. Um, so I laid them out where that will work out perfect, glued them down, and then I started adding other little bits just here and there. Do what feels and looks natural to you. Um, don't force it. Um, you'll notice the edges are a little bit darker on here, and that's actually okay. Um, I sanded down the edge. And uh, what I did was I cut out the center portion. And then I glued on, um, I think it's one millimeter claw plate on the back, trimmed it, sanded it, um, sanded down the edge. And I could have been a little bit wiser and uh, primed and painted it black before I did all of it, but no, I waited until. And I actually kind of like the look that I gave it. Um, it'll kind of mesh for, uh, really well once I'm all done, I think. So it kind of gives it a charred, uh, charred look. So instead of painting this, uh, repainting this, and then going over it and dusting it, I really like, uh, I hit it with a gloss uh, varnish. I just used um, a Liquitex gloss varnish. Um, big bottle, like 14 bucks. And it's an acrylic uh, varnish. So I just brushed it on, I let it sit, um, and I'll show you all the steps. I'm skipping some stuff. If you guys follow me over on Facebook, you already know what I ended up doing. Um, and then I lay down, once that was all dry, I laid down some super glue on the bottom, sprinkled some of my uh, baking soda, brushed it off. Once it was uh, dry, uh, which literally takes only seconds, um, I hit it up with uh, the minute air um, muddy brown just on a brush just slopped it on there don't even have to be cute about it um, and that's going to give you your underlying um, color so what will end up happening on this is um, we'll end up doing like these other little guys we'll stick uh, some fluff in there um, I'll show you some different te techniques for uh, uh, making moss I have a lot of moss, but I'll show you guys how you can make it too in a later video. Um, we'll add some bits, bits and bits of uh, plant stuff in there, and then we'll be using um, several layers of. Uh, I don't, I don't even know where this grew to. I completely lost it. Um, it's the Liquitex uh, liquid water, or liquid water effects, not Liquitex. Uh, Woodland Scenics. I have no clue where it went. I was just using it earlier. Anyway, um, so we'll end up doing that and then building up effects as we go. Um, you can see on this one, there's little little bits of uh, shredded leaf that's in there. So I hope you guys enjoy um, my next video. I, you know I'm. I haven't determined this one I've already started so I'm not going to walk you walk you through how I finished that one you guys will just end up seeing the finished product product on it um, for the base that I'm going to show you guys uh, I haven't determined yet whether I'm going to do the um, the axer or if I'm going to do the um, uh, the scribe on this one 
so I'm not sure. They both have um, the same bases. They both have the same uh, same size base. So I'm not sure. The only difference is in the, um, how I might do this one different is because it's only got pegs on the bottom of it. It is a heavy kit. Um, and you can see its stance is wide enough, it actually stands on the rim. So that's what's making me lean toward this little guy. All right, guys, so stay tuned and I will uh, give you guys an update me starting out this project. I will talk to you later. Peace out.